I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you Jesus Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. When that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand? Or to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine
let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Affirmation is important, Greg. I appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, and it still seems odd to do that if you turn on the news, right? A whole bunch of you going, oh, yeah. And it doesn't matter if the news is coming from Ukraine or Palestine or someplace closer to home. We still gather and remind ourselves that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we can still rejoice and be glad in it because it is the Lord's day. And it reminds us that the Lord is with us always, no matter what. That is the gift we celebrate and why we can gather and worship regardless of everything that's going on. So we pray for the people of Ukraine. We also pray for the people of Russia who are wondering, what the heck? And we pray for all as we seek those who seek peace and serve as peacemakers, for they shall be known as children of God. So welcome one and all in worship as we gather in this space to remind ourselves of the good news, regardless of the bad news that you can see on TV. And so welcome, one and all. Now, as we come to this Transfiguration Sunday, we remind ourselves of the day in which Jesus was transfigured in the presence of three of his disciples and the glory of the Lord was shown. And we probably also still have our moments of fear and trembling whenever we're in the cloud. But may we hear the voice that says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So may this be an opportunity to listen to him. One of the other pieces of good news is we normally tell you, for all of you who are gathered in this space, to help us be good stewards of the environment by making sure we can reuse our bulletins. Well, Epiphany's over. We don't have to reuse them anymore. But we'd invite you to please recycle them. Um, because Lent begins, and there'll be more on that going on. So, you know, so make sure you have it all. But one of the things, especially for today, as you may have noticed, we have fusion. <laughs> for the longest time, we have fusion with us. Hallelujah. So, there should be an extra insert with some other music in, in with your stuff. So, uh, otherwise, the words will be up there, but, you know, otherwise, there's an insert. For those of you joining us online, again, welcome. You join with us in this gathering of the body of Christ. Uh, if you're going to join us for communion, please have those elements handy. And again, everything is emailed and put out on the web so you can follow along as well there. Now, as I said, it is the end of Epiphany, which means the most joyous season of the church year approacheth. Lent. So, and I'm not going to relent. Um, see, I told you, you want them singing. Um, one of the things that we have done, and we haven't been able to do it for a little while, because of, well, you know, life, uh, is Ashes on the Go. So again, we'll be set up on the south side of Ina by the bus stop in front of that, the, the one strip mall between Subway and El Pollo Loco. So that should give you an idea where we're going to be. We're going to have three times, and those times are correct. For all you eagle-eyed viewers who checked out the Tuesday email and didn't say anything because you were too kind, or watched today and didn't see anything because you were too kind, those numbers were wrong because it seemed like the pastor unilaterally changed the worship time. At which point the secretary said, you just don't communicate anymore, do you? Or was that having nothing to do with work? Oh, well. Um, so, 7 to 9, 11 to 1, 3 to 5. If you're interested in coming out and helping and assisting in any way during those times, please let me know, and we'll set you up for that. And then worship is at 6 p.m. for the imposition of ashes and Holy Communion. And then, you know, one of the things we are working on as we do it, maybe this could be something you can Lent and Discipline, is to go and help and find uh, help find these things for our new grace center. It's the old nursery across the way that it hasn't been used as a nursery since long before I got here. Um, we're looking, you know, it's a new ministry that we're starting with uh, the community assistance program of Golder Ranch and Northwest Fire. 
These are the social workers that help people going through incredible moments of crisis. And so we've changed the lock out there. We're looking for some of these items in there. If you, in there's, there was an email, it'll go out again and all that kind of stuff. It's also within your bulletin. Uh, you may notice that many of these items may look similar to things we ask for for other things, for other asks. One of the blessings is we've created, you know, there's been shelving that's been installed there and other things we're going to organize it with bins so that we always will have materials on hand for the social workers, but also for these other organizations, which means if you get one of those to die for coupons or you see a massive sale somewhere and you're like, but I don't want it stuck in my house, we have space. So you could be thinking of others year round and not just when you see something on a screen. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, know what I mean. So. One thing we can't store, and we're not going to on our promises, but is in desperate need because of, well, the stuff we see on the news, but also the fact that with all the weather that's been happening in various parts of the country, a lot of uh, donation centers have been disrupted, and there's such a need for blood. We rescheduled this, so this is March 13th. Go to the website, call, you can schedule, just say, you have beautiful savior on the 13th. <sighs> Gee, it's crazy. Lots of stuff going on, isn't it? The psalmist tells us to be still and know that I am God. A better way of translating that is be quiet. And so I invite you to take a deep breath and be quiet. When you hear the sound, the sound of water and baptism, and the bathing flood that it is from the river of life. And so with that in mind, I invite you to rise as you're able and join me in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Shine on my path and 
Let's join our hearts in prayer. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to him. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. Word of God, word of life. will read responsively Psalm 99. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. And the Lord raised Zion, the cry of all people. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decree that you gave them. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship 
upon God's holy hill, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. Our gospel for this Transfiguration Sunday comes to us from the ninth chapter of the gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, uh, Epiphany is one of those seasons that has a variable length to it, all right? As you know, we're almost in March and we haven't even gotten Ash Wednesday yet. So that means sometimes you get different kinds of lessons in here. We were able to get into two lessons off of the Sermon on the Plain in Luke. We didn't get to the third one. But the last place we were is Jesus is teaching on the plain, and what all happens from there? Well, he goes and heals more people. He feeds thousands. He ends up in all of these different controversies with religious leaders and Pharisees over who you can heal and who you can associate with and who, when you can heal them and all these other things. He sends his disciples out with authority, and they come back and tell them about all they had done. And then... He sits down and asks them, who do people say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus teaches his disciples, you must take up a cross and follow me. If any wish to be my followers, you must deny yourself. Take up a cross and follow. For what does it gather someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? I say all of that because then maybe it'll be more understandable when I say, now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silence, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Now, there seems to be so many scary things going on in the world, and um, one of the things that tends to scare a lot of people is ghosts. Um, you know, I, had a, I saw a ghost the other day, and it, it kind of sent me for a loop. I discovered it was the ghost of Gloria Gaynor. At first, I was afraid. Then I was petrified. First I was afraid, then I was petrified. Don't ask me to continue. All right. Now, um, the Diocese of Phoenix has recently been in the news because of a situation involving one of their priests and the words that they were using uh, when baptism and how that's caused some problems and consternation, which I'm glad I don't have to deal with because, really? But uh, one of the, you know, the Vatican has, uh, because the Vatican's on top of important things, they have decided that they need to deal with this outbreak of irreverent puns that is going on out there. And so they created this whole new office that is staffed by a whole new order of sisters that have been given great authority. Therefore, it shall be known far and wide that none of the puns are to be taken seriously. I guess it's a good thing I'm not Catholic. All right. Now, as we get towards Lent, and sometimes we think of things to do, or things we shouldn't do, or whatever, we tend to make lists. I've been thinking that I should just write a book about all the things I should be doing. It will be my ought-to biography. And I understand that Jenny will give me lots of material. Um, 
yes, we're about to enter Lent. Lent is a time of taking on or giving up. There's, but let's face it, always in life there's things to do. Things, you know, we call them honey-do lists sometimes. You know, now you have a new word for it, an ought-to biography, depending upon how big that list gets. But what do we do when we're looking at the world and we go, there's literally wars and rumors of wars and everything else that's going on in our lives. What do we do? How do we handle it? Where do we go? How do we let our light so shine in a season such as this? What is the role of faith? And so I invite you to remind yourself of the gift as you hear carefully when it's quiet in this space of the waters of the font flowing may you remember those promises god gave you in baptism and so i invite you to remember them right now and repeat after me the promises god gave i've been sealed by the holy spirit i've been marked with the cross of christ forever I am Christ's. And that does not go away. That is a gift of God that comes to you, not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. And the waters of baptism are there to continually remind you of that fact. The waters come. The river of life continues to flow and continues to come to you in so many different ways. Sometimes we forget, but it's always there. And it will not be stopped. Shall we say there's no damn way to stop the waters of life? Thank you, that's four for me now. Okay, so I better stop. But think about the fact that if you really want an example of the power of water, I invite you to go to the northern part of the state. There's a canyon, which we think is rather grand. And what it can do, water will shape, water will flow. The waters of life come, regardless of the situation, regardless of who you think you are, but entirely because of whose you are, because you've been claimed, sealed, and marked. That gift is yours. And it keeps coming. Now, here's a question, though, for all of you. If you're out in the middle of the desert and you come across an odd rock, how can you tell if that rock was originally in a river? It's smooth. Water has a tendency to transform, to change things. Again, I refer you to that rather grand canyon. But that water that continues to flow and shape around you will knock off those hard edges. It will make it rounded. But also notice that sometimes you can end up with a rock in the middle of the desert that was brought there by water. And you're like, how did it get here? Well, I know for me, it took a call from a congregation to get this rock out, into the middle of the, out from the Midwest. And to be honest, I'm incredibly grateful because of some of the friends and family back in the Midwest and the stories they've had about this wonderful winter they're having. I'm overjoyed that I'm here because the water here isn't frozen. But that water of life is going to move you. It's going to shape you because it's going to keep coming at you. So think about your life. Think of those things that have happened to you that have changed who you are and how you are or where you are and how it came to you. And it wasn't just a one-time thing. It tended to be something you had to be immersed in, something that happened over time, something that kept at you, something that in many ways is like what God does as he keeps after us and keeps coming to us and keeps sending us the waters of life. He wants us immersed in this gift of grace and love and hope and kindness and mercy. It is to come to us and continue to wash over us. 
so that that way we are transformed. We are moved from where we are. And yet, we are still needing to be reminded that it's still happening. And that promise is still ours. For when we were baptized, we were given a challenge to let our light so shine. And how difficult is it to think about that in a world where you go, where do I start? You start with me. You start with your immediate vicinity. You start with the fact that you realize and claim for yourself that this ongoing flow of grace and mercy and kindness and love is yours and that it will shape you in such a way that that gift of grace and mercy and kindness of love will be experienced by those around you who experience you, who find you wherever you are. In a world that seems going crazy, we need to reclaim this gift and this flood of life. We need more light in the world. We need more love and grace. We definitely need more peace. We need for us to claim those baptismal gifts that are given to us. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are known as children of God. Children of God, we need peacemakers. And it begins with love and grace and mercy and kindness. It comes with realizing that we aren't God. We don't have to be. That isn't about power and control. That we can see the glory of God that shines through the waters that wash for the love and grace and mercy and kindness that immerses you and immerses them. So that way we can claim that call to take up a cross and follow. We follow one who doesn't order us to. One who doesn't demand us to. But he calls us to. And he calls us to, not because he's sending us where he won't go, but because he goes there. For you. For the world. That gift of grace and mercy and love and kindness is a gift that he embodies to redeem our humanity. And we see a glimpse of his divinity. And that is ours. We can celebrate that just as much as we can receive it. And I pray to God that we can be transformed by it. That we're marked by this cross. But it's a reminder of grace and love and kindness and mercy. It's a reminder of that which never stops. And most importantly, it's a reminder of the fact that there is no such thing as an end. There is a new beginning that comes out of those gifts as we are continued to be transformed and moved. In some cases, just renewed by the gift of the waters of baptism. The voice that said, when Jesus was baptized, you are my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased, is the same voice that came out of the clouds. This is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. May we in the water listen 
But more importantly, may we be transformed. May we move. This gift of grace and love is ours. And may it move us to show this same gift to the world. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Children of God, remember just how loved you are by a God who went to the cross. So remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Join me as we confess the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to the prayers of the people, we lift up the joys and concerns that have been shared with us. And so as we prepare our hearts, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. God, hear our prayers, we lift them to you. God, hear our prayers, Lord, make our hearts true. God, hear our prayers, we lift them to you. God, hear our prayers, For all those needing health and healing, especially Judy, Lynn, Paul, Jack, Katie, Ann, Kay, Ryan, Pete, Jerry, Robin, Bob, and Gigi, and all the casualties of 
violence thrust upon so many. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For all those dealing with cancer, especially Jordan, Susan, Shirley, Barb, Jeannie, Kay, Heidi, Jim. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. who mourn, especially the family and friends of Janie Jackson, David Berry, Marnie Nielsen, Randy Klingberg, and Del Spidel, who will have an inurnment service next Saturday morning. And for all of those who mourn the dead, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Continue to shape us, transform us, and send us. May you tender our heart towards our neighbor. May we find the compassion and the strength to reach out and advocate for those who seek help and care from the dangers, struggles, and tragedies that they are experiencing. May your work bring about a generosity of thought and action in your people. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the people of Russia. We pray for peace. So open our ears, Lord, to your call. Raise up leaders and servants of your kingdom so that we may continue to follow you. For the families in crisis, those feeling alone and isolated, for those facing complications due to COVID, for care, compassion, justice, and peace for all. For those who are known only to God that are in our hearts right now. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for this river of life that comes from you, for the grace and mercy and love that comes to us. And we give thanks for all the ways that this waters of life have pushed us and shaped us to respond to those in need around us. And so we give thanks for the ministries of the church. And we ask your blessings upon this new Grace Center but most importantly, we ask your blessings upon the people who receive. 
so that they may know this gift of love that is theirs as well. And just so we celebrate the gift of life and new life that is ours, we give thanks and celebrate the birthdays of Brenda Laconis, Mary Schumacher, Bob Allen, and Jessica Chalsma, and the anniversary of Corrine and George Malik, and all of those other signs of life, those ways in which we see your love around us and move us. May we celebrate it, and may we give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please find ways, now and always, to share some token of Christ's peace and love with all. yet that's not one of the things we're passing um, but we will start in Lent <laughs> um, so but the offering plates back there for those who need it and uh, the uh, can for the cup of cold water and so thank you to all there's the electronic giving options and other things but thank you for all of the giving that's been done and here's a nudge nudge just you know you're thinking of things to give up for Lent or whatever aha we got the Grace Center thing coming on or the blood drive. So thank you to all in the ways you which you embody that generosity we seek to do here at Beautiful Savior. And so I invite you to turn and receive the blessing of this offering from Fusion.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign, sovereign of, of the, the universe. universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on your journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with the heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. As we get towards uh, communion, we start preparing ourselves in various ways. For those of you who are gathered in this space, communion will be simple. You come down the center aisle in two lines, uh, receive the wafer, and then turn to the side where a communion assistant will be uh, over here in either the table, putting out a cup of grape juice, a cup of wine there for you to be able to take. We have gluten-free wafers for those who need them. Just let us know as you come forward. You will notice now that there is not one but two prayer stations here in the worship space, so there's one for either side. Uh, again, they're not very large, so please be mindful of anybody else who would like to spend some time lighting a candle in reflection just to 
give some space for anybody else who may wish to do that. For those of you joining us online, uh, simple plate, simple cup, bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, simple things. Jesus sat at a banquet table and took the simple, basic staples off of it as a reminder of his presence and his love and his power to do amazing things with simple things like us. So this is how we set. Let's remind ourselves why. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gathered around the throne of grace, let us sing. Thanks, gracious God, for the waters of life, for the gift of baptism, for the gift of grace and love that continues to flow towards us, around us, shaping us, sending us. And we give thanks for this gift of grace that comes to us from the one who took the cross for us. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat, said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all the drinks, saying, Take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So may we receive yet again. May we realize your grace and love that is for us, that is broken and shed for us and for the world, and the gift of new life, through that, may we rise by the power of your Holy Spirit and go forth proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. I invite the congregation to be seated and the community assistants to come forward. For those of you joining us online, now would be the time to take it. Uh, give and receive if you have someone else there taking turns. If not, welcome as we are all gathered in this time and space as the body of Christ to celebrate. And so for all of us, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, take and eat, take and drink these gifts given for you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace. Did that 
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace and your Son, Jesus Christ. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to that home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Fly away, fly away, fly away, like a bird.